figured I'd show you a quick and easy way to change a tire. Uh, my wife's tire is about shot. I want to say she has, let's see how many miles she's got on this thing. She has 3,500 miles ish. Um, the stock Messlers, they are more of a super sport ish tire. They're not quite a sport touring tire, kind of in between. Um, so, 3,500 miles is about average. I know some people will say they're getting 6,000, which I don't understand how they're getting 6,000 out of them. But this is my wife's tire. No burnouts, no wheelies, just riding. Um, as you can see, she used most, most of it. Um, anyway, 3,500 miles. So, since the front's still good, I went with just another stock, stock tire, same size as the stock. So direct from players, you can buy them at your dealer. Um, the front is still looking pretty good. The fronts are actually on backward right now, otherwise I probably would still replace it. But you can see where the wear bars are, there's still some plenty of life, life left on it. So chances are, I'll be able to get another three grand out of this in time to change that one out again. And we'll probably just move her to like a Bridgestone T32 Sport Touring Tire, which I normally would keep on this thing. So what you're gonna need is two beers that's two beer job Some nice highway miles a 36 millimeter socket breaker bar and a torque wrench and torque wrench and then you're going to need a 13 millimeter socket rim protectors depending on how gentle you are spoons a <clears throat> valve stem tool wheel weights a balancer some soapy water, and your wife's hair dryer. We'll explain the hair dryer here in a little bit. So the main thing, so you really don't need this, and I'm gonna explain to you why you don't really need this um, when I show you when I go to balance the tire. Uh, watch me be wrong for this one instance. But what the main thing is, these Motion Pro bead maker spoons, and I will show you how they work um, in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do first is we're gonna remove this old tire, so what you want to do is you can remove the remove and install this tire with your brake collar on, but it's a real pain. So what I do is just take these two 13 millimeter bolts out and kind of lay this over. You got to watch on your 2019s. You have your brake pressure light switch here. Um, just make sure that that doesn't snap off. And then on the 2019s also you have a C clip on the 22 plus. They got rid of the C clip, so you just unscrew the self locking nut. As you can see, there's a C clip. Let's get the tire off. Alright, well, so what should have taken two freaking seconds, um, as you can see, this axle is bone dry. Um, I have not had this wheel off since I bought this bike. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. Look in here, also bone dry. Nice. Alright, so what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to pop out your cush drive because you don't want to get your hands caught on it when you're trying to spin on a tire. If you have a higher mileage bike, you can also replace these little rubber bushings. I already did it to my 2019, um, around 15,000 miles. Um, these are cheap. So if your cush drive basically falls out, it's about time to replace them. So you're going to come over here. Take the space out of there, and then take this valve stem out and get all the air out of this thing. So with the valve stem out, so the way these tools work, see this from the camera. Yeah. So with the way these tools work, what you're going to do is you're going to take this first spoon. It's going to go in like that. And you're going to work your way down a little bit. And you're going to take this second one, and it goes in here like this. So when these two are together, you press down like that, and as you can see, it separates the bead from the tire. Obviously, these also work as normal spoons because now when we go to put the tire on, we use these ones. So what I like to do is take some soapy water, and so once you start popping the bead, um, the soapy water helps the thing come off a little bit easier. So we're gonna stick the first one, first one in, work it down a little bit. 
slowly work it, and there we go. So generally you don't have to do both tools. Once you get it started with the soapy water, it'll just pop off. Obviously with these sporty tires, it's super easy, like when you're doing a sport touring or a big bike tire, it is a little bit more of a pain. Another thing with the soapy water, it helps uh, the tools glide um, and you have less chance of scratching your wheel and you don't have to use your uh, tire protectors or rim protectors. This side, it's not going to want to go. There we go. So what you're going to want to do is I'm going to press down to get this tire in the center of your wheel. Then you're going to come over here. What you can do is use these little protectors. You're going to come in up here. It's more of a pain than they good for anymore. So with enough soapy water, you're not going to scratch your wheel. And you're just going to come through here. Pop it off just like this. And then you have your first speed done. So now what you're gonna to want to do is come back here again so the soapy water is already in the wheel a little bit. On a perfect day, this should just pop right off when you pull it. Hopefully today is a perfect day. At the speed. There you go. So old tire, gone. You got your wheel right there. So the second part and why you need your wife's hair dryer is session cord ready. It didn't. So what you're going to do, basically just turn this on high and you're going to stick it inside the tire just like that. Um, and you can move it around a little bit, but you want this tire hot. The warmer these tires, the easier you go on the rim. Um, another thing you can do when you're taking off the old tire is do a nice big smoky burnout and that'll get that tire super hot. Or go for an aggressive ride and that gets it hot. Um, but yeah, the warmer the tire, the easier it is. You can also just stick this out in the sun if you don't have a hair dryer for bald like me. You don't have a wife. Um, you can just stick this under your driveway and get it nice and hot. So I'm going to turn this on, uh, let this heat up, and then we're going to spoon this on. Alright, while this is nice and warm now, um, I'll give you a quick little tech tip. Almost every single tire manufacturer puts a dot at the lightest spot of the tire. This dot is supposed to correspond with your valve stem. Uh, Metzler uses red dots, as you can see, this one got one right here, and Bridgestone usually uses yellow dots right there. I know my factory, or not my factory, but these, these tires, my truck, um, the dot is actually on the inside, so you can't actually see it, um, but where the valve stem lines up. If that is set correctly, chances of you having to actually use the balancer are slim to none, because that wheel has zero weights on it, those wheels have zero weight on them. Um, we're still going to check it for purposes of showing you how it's done. Um, also, there's always a direction. Here's a direction hour here, so the tire is going to rotate this way. And so the brake disc is on this side, so once it stands up, we're going to be going that way. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take soapy water, spray down the bead, and then theoretically with this warm tire, it should just pop right on there. 
So let's see how theoretical it is. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the red red dot right about stem right next to me at six o'clock, so I know exactly where it's at. You can never have enough soap. We're going to put soap on the rim too because I want to scratch the wheel. You're going to work your way around. Boom, done. Like I said. Super easy. All you need is a little heat. Just like installing bearings. You freeze the bearing, you heat the race, and it usually talks right in. And come back here, push this in, again with your foot or your leg. And just work your way around. So when you're putting these on, you want to take small bites, your spoons. Small bite, still works. There, we have amount of tire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the valve stem back in here. I'm going to get our air compressor. We're going to seat B. Um, another trick to seeding the feed is all the soap in here helps it pop right up off the feed so you don't have to put a ridiculous amount of air in it to pop it out. Seated. We obviously check the pressure. Put her back down to 36 psi where she belongs. That took about 40 psi to uh, the feet. Alright. So we are good there. So now. Go get the balancer. So now what you're going to do is, um, when I do these tires, I don't put the cush drive on because it does sit a little wonky in here sometimes um, without torque on the axle. So I do put this spacer in. And then you take your rod and just feed it on through. Put this in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Even it out. Actually, I think I'm going to Move this. I was wrong. There we go. That's what we want. All right. So you want this nice and tight in there. What you're going to do is you're just going to pop it right up on here. Obviously, make sure it's somewhat of an even surface. And then what you want to do is so let's see. So the valve stem. We're going to put the valve, so the valve stem sitting right there. So we're going to see which way it spins. So it wants to spin that way. Let's put the valve stem over here. It's not spinning. Put it down there. I'm just spinning a little bit. 
So what I may do, so this is still heavy down there. Or is it? See? <clears throat> so if the valve stem area was heavy, wherever I stuck it, it would go back down there to that point. Now is it going to fully go all the way back down there versus going all the way up? No. So right now, what's showing, this is the heaviest part of the tire. So theoretically, if I take this part of the tire and stick it right there, is this going to go back down to the bottom, right here? Slowly but surely. Or will it stop? So it's going to go back over there. Is it going to go all the way around? Because we're watching our dot for valve stem. Okay. <clears throat> so currently this is the heaviest part of the tire. Because we watched the dot. It played its little, little dancing game. So we are going to put a little bit of weight in this tire. Um, so what you want to do is, and this is the heaviest spot at the bottom. You want to come up here and put a little bit of weight up here. And then you're, we're just going to keep repeating that task over and over again. While I was letting my GoPro cool off, I went ahead and added a little bit of weight to this. Um, what I did was, as you can see up here, I just had these two little Motion Pro stick-on weights. Um, what, you, what you do is you take a piece of uh, like painter's tape or whatever, and you can just do one weight at a time, or you can take your chances at a little bit more, depending on how, how much is spinning. Um, I knew this was very close to being in balance, so I just went ahead and put two on since I already had two separated. Um, so now that they're up there, so theoretically, this should never stop in the same position. And there it stops. So remember our dot where it was, so the heavy part of the tire is actually right over there around the 5 o'clock position. So technically, so if we put the 5 o'clock position up there, so you can see this is the light part of the wheel and tire. This is the heavy part up here. There you have it. Um, I'm not going to mess with this anymore. And it should come to a stop. And there we go. Stop. So these are no longer the heavy and light parts of the wheel or the tire. Now that we even them out, we're going to put it right there not going anywhere. So that's how you balance a tire on a static balancer. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Metzler's. I've installed countless Bridgestone tires and never once had to balance it. Um, this is the first for me. So yeah, generally this just stays up on the shelf unless I'm doing a video to show you. So anyway, this is how you do a static balance. So we're going to get this back off. I put a little bit of grease on my axle over there. Um, the torque for that axle on all years is 88 foot-pounds, and then torque for your caliper bolts is 18 foot-pounds whenever you're going to put this back together. So let's get this off the stand and push dry back on and get it mounted. So something you want to watch out for too is this brake caliper bracket has a slot in it. You just slot in your swing arm has to go in that slot. You won't believe how many times I've seen in the forum on the Facebook group where they're mounting this, playing with the caliper, trying to get everything mounted, and it comes out of the slot and ends up like this. So what happens then is, as soon as you hit your brake, this rotates, pulls out your ABS sensor, pulls out this, um, and just as much damage. So make sure that's in. That's why it's always a good idea to just take that off. So you got our spacer in. We're just gonna lift this up in. See how easy we can do it. Flip the chain around. Make sure this is still attached. See the spacer is still there. Go. Use a soft glove hammer if you have to, 
You don't want to force it. Put your adjuster block back on. <clears throat> Want to make sure the whole thing is situated firmly against your chain adjusters. Torque it down. And then by doing this, you shouldn't have to adjust your chain. Um, I know a lot of people like to tighten their chains way too much. That's all about play I want to mind. So there's more play there, less play there, a little less there. So you obviously adjust your chain at the tightest location. So some people might think that's a little too loose. But what this does is it gives you much longer longevity on your sprockets. Um, my FTR, I have I think 12,000 miles on these sprockets. And they still look brand new. So with that torqued, I'm gonna come back over here with your brake hopper. Just don't pinch that. Install these. And torque these back down, 18 foot pounds. You'll get my little torque wrench I have. All right, with everything torqued down, I like to put a little torque stripe from work on there. That way I know these bolts are coming loose, mainly this axle. And also, you want to pump your brake a little bit. There you go. And that is your quick and easy tire change. So, a dealership, I want to say it's almost $100 to change a tire now. Um, it's obviously cheaper if you bring the tire with them, but then they kind of charge you a little bit more um, for not buying the tire from them. But you can also take the wheel off, buy the tire from them, then they mount it. So, it, it's all hit or miss. Personally, I enjoy doing it myself with having six bikes. These tools have more than paid for themselves. And then once a year at the dump, we'll do a uh, free tire drop off. So I'll take a truck full of tires and drop them off for free. So let's go scrub this baby in.
And there we have it, a nice leisurely little ride up the mountain to scrub her in. She's all ready for my wife. Use not all the tire, but enough of it to have some fun. Um, it's kind of crazy. So I went at a similar pace that I normally ride mine at. This is hot, um, but it's kind of crazy seeing how much different the rubber heats up um, with this sportier tire. It also is crazy how this is a 190.55 on the exact same rim as this 180. I want to say it's a 180.80. I could be wrong. 180.55. So this is a 180.55 and a 190.55. Squeeze on the same size wheel. And obviously, back here we have my 200. 55 all squeezed on a five and a half inch rim um i don't think i'm gonna go with a bigger tire uh, for the next one i think i just stick with the 180 they are a little bit cheaper on the 185 and i don't want to make the profile any more round because then i'll lift her up a little bit higher she's already tiptoeing on this thing as it is i don't want her to drop it but if you got any questions feel free to dm me um thanks for watching i'll put in the link in the description all of my tools that i use um most of them can be bought on my amazon or rocky mountain atv for tires if you aren't going to use the oem tires i recommend rocky mountain atv i have no affiliation with them whatsoever but i've been t buying tires there for decades they're always the cheapest tire supply um there's chaparral and a couple other ones that are hit or miss um revzilla is through the roof for tire prices but rocky mountain is always cheapest um, and then Bridgestone, every spring and I think fall, they do $50 rebates for sets of tires. So for a set of T32s, um, you can get a set of T32s at the rebate and everything for around 200 bucks. And you cannot beat a set of tires for that much. Um, I think just this tire from Indian is around $250 just for the rear. Um, obviously, you can shop around and find it a little bit cheaper, but I just bought it straight through Indian because it shipped to my door the next day. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.